Good afternoon. That's something I don't say very often on this channel, and that's because predominantly uh, I am a morning kokanee angler. But I thought today for episode three of Kokanee Across America, I would try an afternoon bite here in Northern California uh, near the town of Redding. I am on Whiskey Town Reservoir. Now, originally I'd planned on going to Berryessa for my California venture uh, for Kokanee Across America, but a couple things. Um, the bite there for Kokanee has been a little bit off. Better for King Salmon, but this isn't King Salmon Across America. And secondly, uh, the price of gas is kind of silly right now, and it's kind of eaten into my budget. So I decided in the interest of my budgets and the continuation of this project to make it sustainable, and because Whiskey Town's having a really great year, or purportedly is, we'll see in a little bit, um, I decided to venture down here. This lake's a little bit easier for the kayak angler, a little bit smaller, a little bit easier for me to, to take on. Um, Berryessa is very big and fish move around here, whereas they tend to be fairly concentrated in two areas here at Whiskey Town, which is near the bridge, which people refer to often which is the main highway bridge uh, that cuts over uh, Whiskey Town Creek. Or down where I'm at today, at Oak Bottom Creek ramp, I launched out right there. It drops off right away. And like as soon as it hit the drop off, I actually marked a couple of fish hanging around 30 feet. So, so I'm gonna get my gear deployed today and start fishing. Um, I've never fished this lake, so this is all new to me, still figuring it all out. Um, but it is a very beautiful lake despite the fires and the impacts they've had on the surrounding landscape. It's very picturesque. Uh, but I also want to do a quick shout out uh, to my two main sponsors of Kokanee Across America, which is Old Town Canoe and Kayak, which I'm out in their salty 120 PDL today. First time I've got the downrigger installed on it too. So I haven't done a downrigger on a pedal drive, so that's going to be a new experience today. Uh, so really excited to see how that does. And then also uh, Paulina or Paulina Peak, since people like to correct me on it. People give me a hard time how I pronounce uh, Paulina. That's I spent many years in Central and South America as a bird watching guide at various lodges. So my Spanish is really good and it's really hard for me to say Paulina, but I'll try to say it in the future. Uh, but yeah, they've, they've done great supporting this project, allowing me to go out and explore these kokanee fisheries and share them with you. Um, so be sure and check out links to both of those companies down below. And if you see something that you like or you can't resist, go ahead and uh, grab one up for yourself. All right, so using uh, Berkeley Gulp maggots today instead of corn, just um, out of sheer convenience. Uh, the, the gulp doesn't have to be refrigerated in and I'm traveling a lot, so I just thought I'd go the convenient route. And I'm going to do a slider weight on my left side, two ounces. And I've got a silver moon jelly, peak performance dodger, and a black micro hoochie. Now normally I'd start with pink, but everybody here swears, oh there's a big fish right there on the surface. Everybody here swears that the uh, Kokanee really like black, white, and red on this lake, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if I believe it. We don't get any hits on that black. Then 15, 20 minutes, we'll uh, switch it out. Now, the one bummer about the afternoon bite is that it does tend to be windier in the afternoons, but there's not a lot you can do about that. So. Okay, and then on this other rod. I'm going to use our new Platinum Flutterbug in Watermelon. So this is red and green, black dots, and then a 50-50. This is their Teardrop Dodger. The one's a little over five inches in length. There you go. Put that at 35 feet. Man, there are fish busting on the surface all around me. I've got to know what they are. Let's switch out to a brighter uh, hoochie here. And uh, just go after these surface feeding fish real quick. Because i got to know. Taking the weight off. Oop. There's a fish on the flutter bug. Still there. It's always when I'm missing out something else. Oh, yeah. 
He's still there. That's down at 35, 38 feet. Hey, that flutter bug worked very fast. Oh, nice kokanee. Hey, 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 hey. There we go. Some kokanee in the bag. Alright, so there's the first kokanee of the day. Nice looking fish. I would say 13. Maybe pushing 14. Probably 13. So not a big one. There have been some 15 and 16 inch fish reported in here, so we'll uh, keep hunting and see if we can get one. So that's on this uh, platinum flutter bug. You see it's a very thick, but lightweight. And uh, it's because it's thick and light, it can't cut the line. Um, so you don't have to worry about the line rub on it or anything. And they seem to seem to like that one. It didn't take but uh, 10 minutes of trolling to get the first fish in the kayak. So. Uh, limit is five fish in California. Let's get four more on that. One of the reasons I'm super curious about these fish on the surface is because sometimes kokanee will segregate uh, spatially by size class. So sometimes you'll get larger fish feeding either deep or on the surface or vice versa. And I just got to know if these are just trout or if they're actually kokanee. And if they are kokanee, are they... Big ones. I'm gonna do this one the same though. I'm doing 35 by 35, essentially 35 feet back and then 35 feet down. I'm kind of shocked I'm not getting bit on the top because there are fish going crazy. And I'm running my pink, which I normally like to run. Um, but they do say black and white's the color here, black, white, and red. So maybe I'll uh, I'll put this black hoochie on with white maggot. I'm always willing to listen to local advice, but I'm also always willing to totally buck and ignore local advice and do my own thing. What kind of company doesn't want a pink hoochie though? Let's be honest. No self-respect in kokanee for sure. Black hoochie on the surface, that just seems absurd to me, but I'm willing to test the absurd. Oop, there's a fish on the surface. All right, really curious to see if this is going to be a trout or a kokanee. I think a lot of people underestimate how productive the afternoon evening bite can be. It can be just as productive as, as the morning, especially on full moon nights when those fish are feeding through the night. Um, they will oftentimes kick onto the feed in the late afternoon and evening hours. Uh, they very much are a crepuscular critters so they're active in those dawn and dusk hours fighting good Ooh. Ooh. No. I, to, I thought I lost them swam towards me a little bit let's see what it's gonna be let's see what we got here still got the shadow on there That's a, that is a big kokanee holy moly don't lose that thing Tyler what? This is what I was telling you about the size segregation. The big ones are up on top. Or at least that's what I got here. Holy cow. That thing is pushing 15, 16. Wow. On that black hoochie. Never would have thought. Black hoochie on the surface. I learned something new every day. That's why I love fishing. So I talked about these fish segregating by age class and size by depth and uh, I've seen fish at the surface didn't know what they were and it was this bigger fish up top smaller fish down the bottom couldn't get them to hit pink on top but they're hitting black so the locals are right they do like that black and white red hooks crazy it's a pretty rare day though that I haven't that split like one on the surface one at 40 or 35 it's kind of a weird split but, you know, you have this conflicting information coming in, I'm seeing kokanee jumping and feeding. I'm also seeing them on the fish finder and definitely feeling a little bit pulled in two directions right now. And because I've got one fish shallow, one fish deep, I'm not sure. Uncertainty. Oh, 
Holy moly. That thing feels huge. Oh no. No, he's still there. Oh, had that moment. Heartbreak moment. Went slack. This thing feels like a tank. That's just 50 feet behind the kayak. Ooh, that's another nice kokanee. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to see that net. Keep that thing away from me. Oh, yes. Wow. That is a tank. Look at that, guys. Okay, that's definitely the big fish of the day. That's about as picture perfect specimen as you're ever going to get. Look at that. That is a chunky, chunky fish. Man. Gorgeous. Oop. There's a fish on the downrigger. There you go, went down deep. Wonder bread and red hoochie. I feel like a schizophrenic kokanee angler right now. Split from these different depths. I mean, that's a nice fish from the deep. <laughs> that's a big fish. That's a very nice fish. Look at that thing. And that's a very nice fish. Here we go. That's a fat fish. Healthy looking. What have I learned so far? Well, I've learned that there are fish feeding near the surface that are big. There are fish feeding deep that are big. And... They'll hit red, they'll hit green and red, and they'll hit black, but I haven't got anything on the white that I tried. But it's very strange, like, you know, I feel like if I had told somebody to, oh, just go out and fish anywhere from zero to 50 feet, they'd be like, thanks a lot, appreciate all your help. But uh, that would be an accurate description of what the fishing's like today. The tough thing about a five fish limit is just to get it figured out, you gotta go home. Oh, yeah. Down Ooh. Felt heavy when I put that initial weight on it. The jumper. There we go. Got him. Decent fish. All right. She's not bad. He's definitely bigger than that first one. Well, that was good timing. The wind's starting to pick up. It switched around. Originally, it was coming from the east, and now it's coming on the west, blowing pretty stiff. Uh, that's my five fish. I'm going to head in. Uh, I'm going to check the stomach contents on these fish, see what they got going on there, if we can tell. And we'll take a few seconds to look at the sizes and conditions of those fish as well. So let's get headed in. Okay, so here's my five. This guy is just a little under 13. The rest of these guys are in that 15 to 16 inch bracket. And one of them was actually a touch below 15, so not bad. Uh, good looking kokanee, very fat, really healthy. Pretty happy with uh, taking these. I'm gonna cut these open, just see what the bellies look like and the meat quality on them. I'm not gonna flay them all out because I got road trips, so I like to keep them just gutted and whole in the fridge or on ice until I'm ready to flay them when I get home. But let's take a look on the inside and see what we got. Lots of green coming out of there. Oh, meat quality looks really good though. Bright red, red orange. But stomach contents look like what I see in other kokanee who are feeding on zooplankton. Lots of algae, not seeing anything else in the stomach, but green stuff, not seeing small fish or insect. Well, there's a, there's an insect larva, uh, that sort of black blotch right there. But mostly what I'd expect I'm not seeing anything in that one. Keep looking, I'm gonna squeeze the rest of this out real quick. You can see those exoskeletons in there. 
or the insects, but the zooplankton break down pretty fast or so small you can't see them. Yeah, let's take a look, see what we got. They look very good. That's a really good color on that. Sort of an orange, but lots of fats. Looks like very healthy kokanee. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me at Whiskey Town. I will put links to everything I use in this video below. If you have any questions, just let me know. It's a fairly straightforward fishery, very kayaker friendly, but also seems to be very friendly for beginners too. Uh, seems to be a lot of fish in here, and they were very active on the feed today. I would suspect as the temperatures start to rise as we go through the summer, we'll get that thermocline and the fish will become more tightly schooled up and more tightly oriented towards the correct water temperature but it's still kind of a late sp uh, spring and the fish haven't really centered on any particular depth at this time so kind of scattered but very much on the feed all right guys that's gonna do it for me i'm gonna get cleaned up get the rest of my fish on ice and get back to town get cleaned up and rested for tomorrow get back out on the water just remember fish smarter not harder bye guys